<clears throat> Hello, everybody. I hope you are doing well. I just want to encourage my fellow brothers and sisters in Christ who are still struggling with fear. Some of you have been paralyzed with fear, unable to even leave your rooms, unable to enjoy the normal things in life, and unable to bear fruit and fellowship with believers in the way that you want to. And uh, you don't have to live this way. But it does take an obedient action on your part to step forward in faith and face your fears. I know that may sound very scary to some of you guys to face your fears because your fears seems like Goliath. How Goliath looked to the Israelite army when they're trembling in their armor and it seems impossible. But I want to tell you, I want to encourage you that God has adequately equipped you for this battle and for the battles to come. You can overcome. All you need to do is step out in faith relying on the Lord Almighty to fight for you and to give you the victory over all your adversaries. You know, when David fought Goliath, he was adequately equipped. It didn't look like it to the people around him, but God equipped him for this time. The people around them actually offered him armor and sword, which was far too large for him and it wouldn't have helped him. They meant well, but um, they thought these worldly um, solutions is what David needed to overcome Goliath. And in the same way, you may be facing similar things. People around you who means well and love you are offering worldly solutions for your mental afflictions. And these worldly solutions are oftentimes, or I mean, I would say always not helpful and they will not lead to real victory because when a Christian goes through severe mental afflictions, worldly weapons are useless. And so this is a weapon. We need weapons that will actually um, tear down these strongholds which are causing the afflictions. Second Corinthians 10, 4 through 5 says, The weapons we fight with are not weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. We demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God, and we take every and we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. Do you realize that the Word of God says that we have the divine power to demolish strongholds? These strongholds are what is responsible for causing you these mental afflictions. Over time, the enemy has deceived and lied in your mind and built up these strongholds and now are able to rain down more fiery darts of fear onto you. But here God says you have the divine power to demolish them. Now either God is speaking the truth or he's not. He is. You can rely on his word. God said so. So you do have the ability to demolish these strongholds. And what is the way to do this? He says, take captive every thought and make it obedient to Christ. The battlefield is in the mind. And when these thoughts come, these fears come, you are able, by God's grace, to take them captive, saying, no more. No more fear. You have done enough and it stops here. I will not be fearful anymore. I will ignore these lies because they are lies and instead, I will focus my mind on truth, which is from God. And when you have truth come in, it will set you free and it will squash the lies. This is how strongholds are demolished. This is the divine power that comes from the weapons that we are able to fight with. 1 Samuel 17, 45 said, David said to the Philistine, You come against me with sword and spear and javelin, but I come against you in the name of the Lord Almighty. No matter how scary things look, you must go against it with the name of the Lord Almighty as your source of power and your weapon and everything you need to overcome. That Philistine army probably laughed at David when he said that. It said, he said, yeah, you're coming against me with this massive sword, spear, and javelin, but I'm going to come against you in the name of the Lord. 
a lot of Americans here will probably laugh at us for saying something like that too. They will say, you're going to try to fight my tank with your God? That's probably how they thought. But this is the exact kind of stance we must take. For God is real and he is for us and he's the one who fights for us. Don't let these things, these weapons of the enemy scare you. Go in the name of the Lord. And so when the devil comes against us with all his lies and deceptions, trying to cause us to fear, remember, you're not fighting him with your own intelligence or any skills or methods or whatever the world has to offer. You're going up against the devil in the name of the Lord Almighty. It is him who fights for you. That is your main weapon and the only weapon you need. First Chronicles 2015 says, Don't, Do not be afraid or discouraged because of this vast army, for the battle is not yours, but God's. So I want you to understand these mental afflictions that you may be going through. This battle is not yours. It, the, the battle belongs to the Lord. That should take off all of the burden off of you. You don't need to figure it out. You don't need to have your own skills involved in this at all. You don't need to take care of yourself at all. God will take care of you. He will fight for you. And I know I need to clear this up because some people will say, Aaron, what, what do you mean? Do you, are you just idle then? You do nothing? No, I'm not saying to be idle. Just like how David had to step forward in faith and rely on God to fight through him, you must do the same by stepping out in faith and God will fight through you. You cannot be idle. But where does all the power come from? Where does all the security and victory come from? It's from God alone, none from you. None from your power or strength or skill. And so, yes, you do need to go out as a vessel of God and make yourself available and be obedient to him. But all of the victory comes from God alone. And we are up against the devil. And this is no ordinary foe. You know, it's not like a really strong human being. This devil is very strong. Just look at Job. Once God gave him a little bit of freedom to do certain things, the devil was able to just kill people, was even able to cause really strong natural disasters and influence people to commit evil things against Job. So this is a strong adversary. And I know some of you may feel inadequate and by yourself you are. But Romans 8.31 says, If God is for us, who can be against us? That is a key thing you should remember when you go up against the devil. It is God who is for you and anyone against you does not stand a chance. No human being, no spirit, no nothing when they go against you and God is for you, no one can stand before you because it is God who is for you. Simple truth that you can hang on to and it's always true. I know we are soldiers of Christ. That's what we are. We are children of God and we are called to be soldiers of Christ for his kingdom purpose in this life. But many of us are like those Israelites that were trembling in fear before Goliath. Many of us wake up each day and hear the loud voice of Goliath, the loud voice of fear, raining down terror into our lives and making us paralyzed, not able to be productive and be a soldier of Christ like we should. You cannot stay here like this forever. God does not intend you to stay like this. He wants you to move forward in faith. 2 Timothy 1.7 says, For God has not given us a spirit of fear and timidity, but of power, love, and self-discipline. Fear is not from God. When you became a child of God, he gave you power, love, and self-discipline so that you can be a very effective soldier of Christ if you surrender and trust and let him work through you. Romans 8.37 says, We are more than conquerors through him who loved us. Does this sound like a soldier or a person that should be trembling in their armor while this little demon starts waving his 
pitch, uh, not pitchfork, but his sting around trying to scare you with his lies when he stands no chance against you. When God is for you and he says he fights for you and he has instilled power, love, and self-discipline in you and he's made you more than a conqueror, you have no business trembling. You have no reason to be fearful. Instead, move forward with confidence and in faith. So when you surrender and trust in the Lord Almighty to fight for you, he will strengthen you. He will have already equipped you to do what is necessary for victory to be yours. God is the one who brings you the victory. And it's very practical things. Just like when David launched that stone, God made sure and guided that stone right where it needed to go. And so for you, when you live out of faith, when you are surrendering and trusting God, he will have you engage the enemy in the right place to put that shield up at the right time to swing that sword of the spirit at the right place at the right time. And he will give you the victory in all your battles that, that you will ever face. Surrender, trust, and rest is key, but also move forward in faith. Accomplish the things that God has laid out for you each day in faith. And finally, let it be today that you say, fear no more. This is where you stop for I am taking a stand and I know who's for me and anyone against me has no chance. And so have your confidence firmly placed in the Lord Almighty and you will have the victory. No more fear. No more wasting your time. Move forward and trust in his word with confidence. God bless you guys.